Welcome to part number 66 of Gran Turismo 5 A Spec. This is the Moving Chicane, and today we're going to be doing the Super GT series. Why we're not doing DTM? Because there's one prize car that we could win from an endurance that gives us a DTM car. Well, it's not really a DTM car, it's a German race car. Anyways, three events, Suzuka, Fuji, and Tokyo for the Suzuka race. I'm going to go ahead and use the Bay, the Castro Tom Supra from 97. Hello, would you like a sim racing lolly? It's legally 18, at least in the seven states. Almost part 69. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to get rain in this race. We'll find out right now, I guess. GT unpredictable weather. <laughs> yep. Uh, Why can't we have this in sport? I don't know. Because the PS4 because, isn't strong enough. <laughs> because is... you haven't painted it on the side of a Samba bus yet. Come on. Yeah, you have to paint on the on a server bus to have paint. Mm -hmm. That's oh, why good was on the next update. Someone painted in the server bus. Yeah. We need good wood. Yeah, get that no one asked for. <laughs> <laughs> hey and hey uh, UFC vet, how you doing? <clears throat> hey UFC. Hello. <laughs> oh my god, what is this what are those crabs? Alright, here we go. Oh shit! Yes. The Super GT boys in here. Finally. I'm just um, bit. I'm just busy doing spr like spring cleaning. What am I supposed to do? Uh, join us because this is your racing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know it's my favorite series, but please, like, my house is already like dirt everywhere, and I'm already like having allergies. <clears throat> oh my god, I can't see shit out the windshield. <laughs> Have anyone actually done the Suzuka 1000 in this game? Rhino. Yeah. I wonder how long would it take to do. Well, with Rhino, even with the even with the AI at the crappiest level. Well, Rhino and Cat Cool. Um, for the 1000 km, I'm gonna do it with Mikhail. Um, not at my house though because I don't have space for two. I stream that, so I'm probably gonna have to go. Borrow my buddy's uh, guest house in the back because he has like really wicked fast internet and a lot of space in the back. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna be the. Am I gonna be the one who's gonna be buying the food for during the Suzuka 1000K? Well, both of us. We'll have to figure that I out missed, later. I miss the Suzuka 1000Ks in real life. <laughs> Me too. It got replaced by the 10-hour race, which isn't bad, but I mean. No, I thought it got replaced by Fuji. No, it's it was a Suzuka ten hours because they wanted to bring, I guess GT threes and stuff to Suzuka. Yeah. I guess I yeah. mean, or they want to make they want to make four events. Yeah. Because there's Baffers, there's Spa, and then Suzuka, and California, which is Laguna Seca. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you see that Mika happening will race on the Suzuka ten hours? Oh, really? In, uh, Yes, yes. Adam McLaren is gorgeous because it's half orange and half with with Mika's helmet colors. Nice, nice. Sandwich, um, shut up. <laughs> he quoted me saying, "I'm not doing Mikhail, but not in my house since I don't have to pay for two people." <laughs> uh, for the people who watch Monaco, how was the Monaco race? Good, man. I it was good. I still have to watch it because I wasn't at home on the, the day. First of all, I don't have it, so I have to ask you guys about it. <laughs> well, I I watched it on. I don't have ESPN or I don't have Sky Sports. I have Univ Univision Deportes, however. So even though with their atrocious commentary aside, I give the race a seven out of you know seven and a half out of ten, basically. I mean, it wasn't like the best race in the world, but for a Monaco race, it was pretty close. Like. Verstappen had a penalty, yeah, but, you know, he was right behind Hamilton and trying to make moves left and right, which was the interesting part. And Hamilton was on sh on bad tires. They made a bad tire call, but Lewis made it work. So it the was best Monaco I've probably seen would be from last year when Daniel Ricciardo won by 300 w less horsepower than the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was awesome. Yeah. That was a bad race was, a ca was meh, but it was quite exciting to see him win by... Yeah, field. because Ricardo was basically dominating until he had his problem. Yeah. 
I reckon he should have still won 2016, but his team screwed him up. Yeah. 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 Uh, 2017 was boring because Raikkonen, I guess, was started on pole, but Ferrari made the swap of places by strategy. Yep, obviously trying to put Vettel up front. I hate how they yeah. like fucking Leclerc's uh, season up, dude. I want to quite go as far as say career because it's not even, not even that far into his Ferrari stint yet. But still, it's just like they're fucking his season up at least. The Bondi <laughs> engine. Would you sum up yeah. No, but for me, Monaco was the final drop of water. If I was Leclerc, I would be by now searching everywhere else to race and giving zero bucks to Ferrari because. Doing what they did at their home race, knowing that it's the hardest place of the whole season to overtake, unacceptable. Yeah. Yep. See, I reckon they should throw a curveball in the Monaco Grand Prix. So, at half distance, 39 laps, they should stop everyone on the start finish line, turn the cars around, and say, Right, you buggers, go around the other, other direction. <clears throat> See how you can do for 39 laps that way. <laughs> yeah. Hey, be gonna... Oh, you just learned about Crash Gate Sandwich? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Have fun reading all about that. Also... Yeah, the Crash Gate is quite up story. Uh, learn about Spygate, too, while you're at it from 07. That was a hell yeah. of a story. <clears throat> I have a video that... I saw a few days ago that explains really well the spy gate. I wanna search it and post on the Discord. Yeah, go for it. I wanna see that. Oh, the um, the race that happened at Singapore, you mean? Yes. Yeah, the Singapore gate. Yeah. That was so blatant. I was actually watching that live, and I was I was like, what the hell? You could tell it was blatant. Yeah, it was it. What and about also, the... it was about... so obvious because Piqué, he spawned on the same corner on the formation lap. It was literally in the... your face that it was on purpose. Yep, what hey. about when the two Ferraris took out each other at the start of the race? When was that? Uh, Singapore. what's that? 17. Singapore. Yeah, 17. Yeah. Oh, well, we're talking about Spike, uh, Crash Gate. Yeah, Crash Gate was uh, 2008, yep. I was... aka the race that killed uh, Massa's hopes of a title. I was listening to um, Beyond the Grid, the F1 podcast, and Massa was telling me that, oh, not telling me, Massa was telling the host of the show that um, I don't remember who he was talking to. I think it was, it was one of the Ferrari people. I don't remember who exactly. Rob Smedley, maybe? Um, he... Basically, they told him, yo, this was staged. Like, Renault did this shit on purpose. We could tell him. Massa was just like, no. He was like, no, you know, I know Nelson. He wouldn't do something like that. No driver put themselves in harm. And then it's funny when the cat comes out the bag and he sits there, he was just like, I felt angry because not only did he put himself in danger, he ruined my world championship, essentially. Oh. Yeah, and uh, when he knew... He had all the evidence that it was on progress. He tried to appeal at the FIA coach so he could erase the race from the calendar. But it was too late because every uh, when you want to do things like this to appeal because the race was staged and this kind of shit must be in, uh, during the season. So he did it in 2009. It was too late for him to try to appeal. Please. And yeah, since after that event, Massa was friend with Piquet. And when he knew about the event, too, the, the, I, I believe that he was felt shattered because he wasn't really close to Piquet. They were kind of friends and kind of stuff. Because, for example, Massa used to organize a cart race here on the end of the year. And he would invite PK, Degrassi, and a lot of international drivers. He never raced there again. Yeah, like Kanan and them, like a lot of the Brazilian yeah. guys who raced overseas. 
o é, velho. É, Ivan. When Alonso was a Ferrari, Ivan Alonso joined. It was a literally a uh, good cut race on the final of the year. Ender says Flavio is and always will be a piece of shit. Well, him and Pat Simmons were the ones who really did the crash gate. It wasn't just Flavio, but no, Flavio didn't do anything, but he knew about it and didn't do anything about it. Is what I yeah. think made him a piece of shit, in yeah. my opinion. He, he had to accept because Renault was on a track from the, the manufacturer itself. It's like, if you don't eat this year, we are pulling out every investment. So. They, and they knew that they didn't have a car capable of winning, so they came out, look, we need to do anything, and they did what they did. But you know what the crazy part is? They won at Suzuka right after, in like, in a legitimate Fuji, fashion. It, it, oh, it, oh, Fuji, 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 Fuji. Thank but you. But they didn't have the car for that. They won because Mas and Hamilton took each other out. Oh my god. Uh, is this why Alonso has shit luck? I wouldn't quite say Alonso had any no, doing at it. He didn't because, know anything, no, man. He didn't know because when these things happen, what the first rule is the least amount of persons possible must know. So they only needed to the the crew chief and PK because he would do the dirty work. Alonso didn't need to know about all this kind of shit. Wait, how did Flavio treat Johnny Herbert? I know Flavio wanted to hold like Paul Tracy hostage when he tested for Benetton. Like yeah. he, wa he wanted to make him sign like a five-year deal in order to get into the like car and just to test it. Yeah, but I uh, guess both PT refused because it wasn't granted a racing seat at F1 and I, I don't know, I guess he realized that if he joined it, he would be number two of Schumacher, and yeah. exactly. he didn't want that. <clears throat> Alonso's 09 season was a statistically best season for Renault? Um... No, I thought, uh, I thought Alonso was in a... Ferrari in 09. No, he no. was at Renault. Ferrari was 010. He was at Renault. 010, uh, 010 that he was on Ferrari. If we consider that he was basically dragging on his back the piece of shit that was the Renault R29, yeah, he did the best season possible with that. Ah, uh, yeah, shit. <laughs> yeah, because BK and Grosjean couldn't do nothing. The car was so terrible that only Alonso was managing to do something. That's why Rishi asked. He scored like 100% of Renault's points in 09, didn't he? Yeah, I guess he did. But that's, that's what I was saying. Oh my. And, and, and also, all the scandal only exploded the, the crash gate because Pickett, he wasn't doing a wow season. He was doing a okay. He even managed the podium at the German Grand Prix. That was a late. But. Wasn't uh, it? Yeah, all right. So, but uh, he wasn't uh, secure of the next season. Uh, I guess Briatore came to him and said, "If you do this, I guarantee that you're gonna race the next full season." And Pique, he didn't tell about to his father about it. If he did, oh, hang on, uh, I'll be right back. Oh my God, I gotta hear that part now. <laughs> I, I would wholeheartedly believe Arthur when it comes to Nelson PK Sr. because like he knows his shit about PK Sr. I forgot how much of a shit show Spygate was and that hundred thousand dollar or hundred million dollar fine. Yeah, dude. Oh, but Sean also said also is probably innocent in Crash Gate, but he straight up sent emails back and forth to Pedro De La Rosa about the secret Ferrari specs. That was really stupid. Wait, what when did De La Rosa No, he didn't drive for Ferrari in any way, shape, or form, did he? No, he was a McLaren test, test driver. Drive. Yeah. He was just a McLaren so, test driver. Oh, but it was one of the Ferrari, um, ex not executives, but one of, like, the personnel that was sending all the car specs and stuff to McLaren. Yeah, over to McLaren, yeah. Yep. Jeez. Ron Dennis did look very sheepish when he was in court. Which season is the one with the least points for a world champion? Any season with field move? <laughs> 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 Oh 
What was that, 96 or 95? Uh, 97 when he won the, the world championship, oh, and then right, like... Yeah. 98 oh, with honest. Williams was like okay, but 99 with BAR? Oh my god, dude. Villeneuve didn't win the championship. His bloody Car neon did. bleached blonde hair bloody won the championship. Christ. <laughs> the sad part about Villeneuve is like, I think he's like an okay driver, but he's just arrogant as hell. Like, every time he went to the NASCAR races, I, I just oh, yeah. felt like he was super arrogant there. Yeah. <clears throat> Formula E, pretty arrogant and kind of like, oh, I'm the first world champion from F1 to race in FE and he like hits the wall twice in the Venturi, I'm like yeah, yeah okay <laughs> See, I reckon they should go back to the points um, system that they used to use back in the 50s and 60s, I think it was like the top 5 scored points, it was like 9, 6, 4, 2 and 1 or something that would make it interesting Oh yeah, that that uh, point system was pretty good. Yeah. I like the current point system too, though. It's alright. Wait a minute, De La Rosa was leading the, the British GP when the Kilt Man was on track? See, I don't remember much of the British GP in 03. I, I remember the Kilt Man, and I remember my dad was just like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, because didn't Schumacher and what's-his-face just pit? Maybe. Because they were in the pits when the safety car came out. I think so. I remember that because I was watching him going down okay. the... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I am back. All right, so you were saying that if um, PK Jr. never okay. told his dad. Yeah, because if he called his dad, uh, PK would say, fuck this shit, fuck them all, do not do it. Because he knew that the game that his son was doing was too dangerous and it was just... Uh, how can I say, tricking him into doing something mm -hmm. under the promise of something that he would never accomplish. Rishi says they should honestly extend the points further down since retirements are rarer these days. I don't know if they should. I think top 10 is like the perfect cutoff in my opinion. Maybe if they had more entries I could see myself saying I say that I have a theory that if we had points for every place, I think the fighting would be better because it will be even the last position counts. Oh, that, excuse me. That is true. The well, if we had like, I think if we had a balance of like midfield and back marker teams. That could work. I mean, but well, actually, the midfield's good, except for Williams. Williams is the only back markers this year. What I think they should yeah. do is literally the, the the last couple of teams in F1 are literally independents. They act like independents. They got the speed as independents. So give them their own point system. So say the, the last 10 cars, give them their own points, <clears throat> but do it only for the top six, like they used to back in like the 90s and early 2000s. So mm -hmm. you get 10 points for a win, then it goes to 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1 and do the same for the last teams so that they are in their own race and so on and so forth because they ain't gonna have a bloody chance of winning any Grand Prix anytime soon in the next 25,000 years um, so, no yeah. it'd be, be nice uh, it, could, it could work too it will change all the structure of the F1 championship and you know how Annoying the fans can, can be, and even the old heads can be too. I mean, for me, the qualifying format that they got now at the, at the moment is okay, but I remember back in the, the late 90s, early 2000s, especially like the Australian Grand Prix, I would wake up specifically to watch it, and I really enjoyed the one hour session every team had, or every car had just 12 laps to do a lap time. I really enjoyed that mm. because it was, it was a gamble if you could go out and there wasn't going to be any traffic on the grid or whatever and there was no worry about fuel or tires yeah. or this crap but it's also a problem because most of the races were like nothing nothing <coughs> nothing nothing yeah. suddenly 10 minutes of everything and then nothing 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 yeah. now we have action throughout all the qualifying 
É, it's a quite a good uh, quite a good action. The only thing that I, I read, I guess, in Reddit, that for some specific races like Monaco, that have a lot of traffic problems, uh, suggestions to do a group qualifying, like group A, the 10 drivers, top five uh, follows. Uh, yeah. Group B, uh, the, the other 10 drivers, the top five follows, and then you have key three. Oh, well, John says, or the FIA could stop sucking Ferrari's dick when it comes to threat. Well, when it comes to the threats to leave F1, because they're losing. They did in the early '90s and the late 2000s. They always do that, man. They always <laughs> make the threats, but they won't ever yeah. leave. Oh, trust me. It's, it's, it's tradition. Ferrari, when they are losing, they trap to quit F1, and then suddenly the new regulations are. Quite exactly what they wanted. Yeah, they're just throwing their toys out of the pram at this stage. Like, we don't like this. We want it our way. And the FIA is like, okay, calm down. Here's your sweets. Well, that's not. Instead of just saying, okay, you want to leave F1? There's a the door. Fuck off. <laughs> Stop being such pompous little pricks and actually do some racing like you're supposed to do. F1 will be nothing. <laughs> well, the only reason why they have the power is because, like, aren't they the only, aren't they the oldest team that's actually stuck around since the very beginning and haven't left their tech sabbaticals or anything? Yeah, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean anything on paper, does it? Yeah, true. Anyways, two laps to go. I'm not doing cockpit view anymore because you could barely see out the damn windshield. Okay, I'll do cockpit view. I know some people be like, oh, you're not doing cockpit view, isn't that? It's real sim racing. Oh, you're not a sim uh, racing. Unserb report block. Uh, you're not doing a cockpit view. You stink. Uh, you stink. You don't do cockpit view. A sim racer who races chase cam. <laughs> who do you think you are? I'll do that right now. <laughs> Just to piss me off. <laughs> yep, exactly. You son of a gun. Rhino does that as well. Well, he does he every he, he does every cam, which is what I like. Yeah. See, I can't do that. I only the only games I actually play chase cam is like that stupid truck game I'm doing at the moment, which sucks bollocks. Um, or just arcade racers in general, because they don't have a cockpit cam. They I can have like bumps which go through the floor. I can only do chase cam if I'm playing with a controller. <clears throat> I I do I don't know chase cam. I play every Gran Turismo using the bumper cam. Oh, really? Yeah, for me it's the best bumper cam in the world in every racing game. It's the perfect hit so you can see all the road with you have only the focus on what's ahead of you. It's for me the best cam. Yeah, bumper cam is the best, I agree. agree. For me, cockpit cam is because, especially if it has, you know, the steering wheel, because then you've got a point of reference for how far you're turning and and God knows what. Especially if you're using a wheel. Yeah, cockpit cam for the control the wheel with. Oh, oh suspension? What? Unless there's a different Bose I'm thinking about. My dumbass thing about the Bose speakers. Do you think roof cam's better? I mean, it's all preference, honestly. Like, some people are faster in cockpit cam, some people are faster in chase cam. Like, I'm... Or even bonnet cam. Sorry, hood cam. No, it's, bonnet. it's bonnet. It's a bonnet cam. Potato, <laughs> potato. <laughs> Miata MX5. <laughs> <laughs> Roadster. 180, 240, 200. <laughs> Gas, petrol, it's all the same. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a bloke down the bottom of our road. He owns a Mitsubishi GTO. 
Oh, does he? Nice. Yeah, it looks like shit. It's oh. not being washed, I think, in about 30 years. My god, is it the it is, is it the VR4 or is it the SL? Uh I don't really know. Let me just double check. No, I haven't, Ender. Wait, it's the same Bose? Are you serious? They used to make suspensions? What? The Bose company. Oh, the Bose. Yeah, I didn't know they made suspensions. I thought they just made speakers and like microphones and stuff. Wait, wasn't Bose that kind of suspension that were people were telling that was the next step of suspension that was perfect linear and this kind of shit? Oh, thank God, this race is over. The car just slides all over the place because it's rain. <coughs> Petrol. <coughs> I mean, what? I wish I could drive a Renault in this race, but I can't. <laughs> a what? <laughs> a Renault. A Renault. Sorry, what about a, a, a Vohol? Yeah, and a Pugiot. Pugiot and a Vohol and a Renault. <laughs> you don't like really you don't like uh, Suzuka Rishi? Well everyone has their opinion. Be nice, Mikhail. See ya Mikhail. This this is a <laughs> democracy, sir. Anyways, well second round is Fuji? Oh uh, yeah, no, it is no, Fuji. No. Okay, so you guys are gonna help me make a choice here. Um Ray Brig or the Nis the Nissan Fair Lady Z concept LM race car? Mm, Ray Brig. Ray Brig it Ray is. Brig. The, the, the concept will be used for uh, Tokyo then. No, I don't want to go back. Hey Adam, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Hey Adam. Ray Brig, yeah. You have mixed feelings about Suzuka? So, oh well, they decided the Z. Jag, <clears throat> so, okay, Jaguar, that you pronounce like a W, right? It's ja yeah, it's yeah, Jaguar. Jag yeah, it's Jaguar. 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 Like the Atari Jaguar. Hmm, I gotta play me in my Cyber Morph and my Kasumi Ninja. Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the Atari Jaguar was a very, very oh fun my console. Yes. The thing is, the controller was the size of a breeze block. You needed prosthetic arms just to hold the bloody thing. Yep. <laughs> you mean Ford, but more leather and worse wiring? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy, it's a JGTC car against a bunch of Super GT chads. All right, let's see how we do. What's my favorite racing game on PS2? Gran Turismo 4. He's lying, it's Chariot Wars. That's not a PS2 game. If you ask me <laughs> of my favorite PC racing game, I'd say Chariot Wars. No, no actually, I'd say no. Wild Animal Racing, Wild Animal but racing. that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> the only good Jag is the XJ220. I like the E-Type. I like, I like the, the F-Type. Is it the XKR? Yeah. The old old one. That one's cool. The XJ, there's an XJ something. And GT2 has like a, I, I don't know what to call it. It's like a saloon or something. It's kind of like a luxury car. It's like an old one. They have like an old school uh, Jaguar. It's really cool. Cannot remember the name uh, of it. XJ6. Yes, that one. That one's awesome. Same with um, Aston Martin. They have like a DB4, I think it is. Ah, no, there it is. There's a Jaguar like the XJRS. XJRS. The SK8 right, does look good. The V12 1990. Oh, they're such good cars. I used to have a model of it. Bloody gorgeous. The E Type, no. I don't like the look of it. For some weird reason, it just looks odd. But I like the, um. Yeah, the XJRS. Series 2 E Type is awful. I'm talking about, like, the. Original, like the OG one, the like yeah, one. Yeah, there is. 
Series 2 is the one with big bumpers. It doesn't look as refined as the first series. Oh, this car is a horn. Ooh. What's the best era for JGTC slash Super GT? The late 90s. And I'm always saying that because yeah. those cars were so damn cool. I mean, the, the cars now... Castro. The cars now are fast as hell, but my god, those other cars were so nice looking. Back then, uh, they were very aesthetically pleasing to look at, yeah. especially the um, the 36 Castrol Supra, the that multicolored Honda that they used to have as well. Nice. Um, the oh, is it the the J Jayco one? Jayco, Jayco. I think so. There, there was a version of it in the Japanese Touring Car Championship as well. It, it is the uh, the Honda Civic. Oh, I know what oh, you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's like patchwork. Patchwork, yeah. Yeah. Over, over the side of it, yeah. Oh shit! Stream's over, guys. Steven HD is here. Oof. So, uh, for me... uh, that's my dad, actually. Get out of here, dad. Is the, <laughs> is the era between '98 and? Uh... 2002. No, 2001 because 2002 they, they Honda released the the car the the facelift NSX. Yeah, I mean the the cars that Eric Comas drove, the Pennzoil uh, Guidelines, those ones are so badass. Like I I didn't even know there was an R33 Pennzoil one until I was watching like Nismo TV, I think it was, and I was like, holy shit, this is so awesome. Which super was it? Which the Americans couldn't get in GT? It wasn't purple. It was blue. It was the SO Ultra Flow. Oh, the yeah, SO Ultra Flow! It's beautiful. Yep, we couldn't get it because we have Exxon here. Ooh, Mr. Big Time. Uh, yeah. Uh, another super that I guess no game had it, but it was so good to look. Is the Advanced Super? The Advanced Super? What? Yeah. That one was in Forza, Later. wasn't it? I don't know, but I was speaking about GT, but I never saw the Advanced GT. It sure. was so beautiful. One of my all-time favorite liveries has got to be the black, white, and green. Or the black, red, and green, sorry, Castrol livery. Oh, the, the one from GT1. Yeah, the one that was used for the NSX and the Honda Accord. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It is so good, with the green rims as well. Oh, yeah, that one is I, sick. I, I did a replica on the YouTube spot. That livery is so damn good. Mm -hmm. What kind of PS3 oh, am I using? What... I'm using a Slim and it's modified. God, that's a livery I should have used for my bloody Clio instead of Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> what, what livery? I'll show you, Arthur. I, th I think okay. I've. Actually, if you go on my server. Uh, go into League Events and look on... No, Confort. no, 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 the livery that you say you should have used. Oh, the Castro livery. Oh, yeah, yeah, you should. Yeah, The Mobile One that. NSX, that one was pretty badass. I like that one Viper, the STP one. I think it's called Tyson oh. or something? Yeah, Ty Tyson, yeah. Uh, that one actually disappeared recently. I think about one year ago, uh, they were gone because they didn't look on a trick race or something. The last car they had was, I think, the... Is it an Audi? Oh, no. Either way, uh, I remember they had the uh, F40, I believe. In GT500? Yeah. Uh, they had the holy F40, shit! Yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah, they have yeah, that. Uh, they have the that. Beginning of the Super GT. He even had a Porsche 962 uh, racing. I mean, th to be fair, they it's really new, so they decided to put every everyone they want just to look for, you know, cars. Yeah. They were accepting oh. anything just for having a grade. Oh, by the way, see you, Ben. Later, uh, Ben. Ben's see you, Ben. <clears throat> Bye, Uncle Ben. Yeah, I, mean, what? I mean, here's and here's the thing, like this is before. Yeah, is <laughs> this is before Super GT was like they got all the um, the classes together. Back then, everyone goes. If you want a uh, a 962, go for it. If you want a GTR, go for it. If you want a Viper, go for it. But now everything's regulated by the JAF, right? Like Yeah, JAF, they already got everything in. Which, by the way, uh, the track that you're on, uh, they're going to be racing against the DTMs. Oh, oh yeah, November. Is it November the 11th, I think it is, isn't it? 
silhouette. Okay. okay, that is gonna be a show and a half. Gotta watch that one then. Well, because they got oh. the, the three cl the three chassis, aren't they? You got the Jaff, they got the mother oh, chassis, yeah. and they got the the main one, haven't they? Um, uh, he, oh I was yeah, gonna, the, I was the joint uh, race between Super GT and DTM. Uh, yeah. no. But the actually. thing is, as well, is that um, from what I heard, next year they're actually transferring three teams, or it's the end of the season, the last race of the DTM, three teams from the Super GT are going to compete in the last race of the DTM Championship. Yeah, they will. And they, on the final round of the Super GT, three teams from DTM got a race with that together. Yep. And then they're all converging to do one massive race at Fuji in November. Yeah, they, this Which one it, race, I guess. Isn't it going to be part of the Nismo Festival? I think it is, isn't it? Or is it close oh. to roundabout there? Okay, no, okay. I, I don't know. Okay. I guess they're going to be a... I don't know if it's going to be under the festival or a standalone race. Because for me, it's big enough for being a standalone race. Um, actually, talking about the GT300 thing, I think they're trying to make it as a supports race, I think. That's what I heard. No. Yeah, that's what I heard. They're going because... to... They're, they're going to... Take away GT300 from like Super GT and make it a separate like race or what? No, 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 oh, no, no, no. Oh, like, thank God! I was gonna so, say, dude, that's gonna take away no. from the spectacle. No, because they want to, because you know they're not as fast as the DTMs, but they still want to be used, right? Yeah. Make it, make it use it as a, you know, what they did before with what's called the Fuji All Star Race. They could just <laughs> do that and then make it like a. a you know, <laughs> What is this? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> sorry, I had to. I'm sorry. <laughs> we killed him. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> did I did something wrong? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Adam. Because Adam asked me, <laughs> Adam asked me, are you using a controller or a wheel? And Mushy just writes keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me let me start reaching while we guys are just going to die. I'm just I wholeheartedly apologize. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm using a. Driving Force GT, but I'm gonna be using a Thrustmaster T GT in the very near future when uh, once Cat Cool sends me a Gen X, a Gym, Gym X adapter eventually. Anyways, so what the hell is the Fuji All Star Race? Uh, let me check them real quick. Uh, right. I need to look back at 2012, I think. So basically, what 20... you're saying is like this DTM versus Super GT showdown is gonna be um, it's gonna be like um, what's the word? An, ex an exhibition held at the Nismo Fest. Yeah. I, I don't know. Let me check for sure, just to confirm. All right, 2011. What was it? No, it's not the uh, All Star Race. It's the. It's called the um, Fuji's, I believe. The All Star Race. Well, it's. Where's well, my boy Chase he, Elliott at, huh? Well, okay, maybe it's not called the All Stars, but it's called Sprint Cup. It's basically an exhibition for you know, no oh, points. Sprint Cup. I mean, Elliot Sadler's gonna be in there. He's gonna flip oh, again. Shut up, <laughs> boy. The chase for the Sprint Cup. Oh Christ! No, just don't talk about that. Like, <laughs> uh. Fuji Smash Mouth featurette. <laughs> the Fujis, oh. I like the color cover of Killing Me Softly. Yeah, me too! Oh, the Fugies! That's how you pronounce it, not the Fugies. The Fugies. <laughs> the Fugies are awesome. Killing what if they were me singing? So... What if they were um, singing about a uh, cling film or saran wrap? Would that be Cling Me Softly? <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, mountain fun guy. I like Fiji waters. <laughs> Jesus. I very much enjoy Fiji water too. 
Aim? Why does the map of Fuji look like an old Tommy gun from the 1940s? <laughs> because it is. <laughs> just <laughs> just <laughs> deal with it, mate. Just deal with it. It's like Bloody Lagoon Asia. Uh, it's all yeah. over again. The same way the uh, spa frequency. I remember say Uzi. An Uzi, yeah. Welcome to Spa as an Uzi 9mm. <laughs> Oh, bloody hell. <clears throat> See, you need uh, the voice of Bart Simpson to uh, announce Laguna Seca. Oh, Bart Seca? Yeah, Bart Seca. <laughs> <laughs> Chris just said it! Chris just said it! Laguna Seca looks like Bart Simpson's head. Did you just think about that, Chris? Yeah. Because Mushy actually went and made Bart Seca. Yeah, yeah. I uh, <laughs> photoshopped it. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad the, I'm not the, the only one with a warped. I'm just very happy I'm not the only one with a warped sense of vision. <laughs> All right, I actually got a few things from the uh, press conference from Suzuka Circuit after the uh, Super GT race. I got a couple of topics, really. Oh, nice. Go for it. All right, so one of them is interesting is that there's a potential inclusion of the Suzuka 10 hours as a special round into the Super GT calendar. Wait, huh? Suzuka 10 hours into a special round for 3GT. What? Uh, the, let, me re let me read this. Okay, okay, I'm confused because yeah, it's like yeah. they got rid of the thousand just to replace it with the 10 hour? Yeah, uh, but uh, let me. Okay, so last year the GT, well, GTA, which by the way, not the GTA, the, like, you yeah. know, that you guys know. The Gran Turismo uh, Association? Yeah, uh, well, supporting the, the uh, Suzuka 10 hours with staff members and equipment for inspection of the cars and technical equipment. This year's title sponsor, BHC Auction, also stated a partnership with the GTA. You know, these classic GTC and Super GT, Super GT machines, as well as applying classic Super GT race as Suzuka Sound of Engine event. Two auctions are planned so far one at the final round of Motegi and another at the exchange battle with ATM at Fuji. In the future, uh, Masaki uh, Bando would like to include the, ten, the Suzuka 10 hours as a special round for the GT300 teams, which could be award points for the Super GT Championship. Similar to the Super GT Taiku's ST X class, team points could attain points for the respective championship by taking part in the race this year. The major hurdle also cost of the increased m engine mileage, the priority control tires, and more. The teams need to purchase a total of 15 sets of tires, including wet tires. All these factors need to be taken into consideration to decrease the burden on the teams. The GTA is discussing such topics with the SRO. The GTA shows interest in the idea of splitting GT500 and GT300 for special events. However, the interest of the fans would always take top priority with making such decisions, Masaki Bando explained. Huh. Okay. So, so they're basically separating, well, separating the GT300, so maybe they're gonna have another race in the 1000. The problem is, we have the tires which could affect some of the, the motor chassis as we saw last year. They weren't really competitive. Also, another problem is that there's a lot of mileage because, you know, you're adding, again, 1000 kilometers. Well, not 1000, oh, no, not 1000 kilometers, even more than that. So you're just gonna have to spend like 10 hours. <coughs> right. Well, uh, first of all, anyone who's watching the, the stream right now, are, are my frames dropping? Because I feel like they are, but. OBS says they're not, but it just let me know if they are dropping frames. Anyways, um, Andrew makes a good point. He says, if they merge, I wonder what they'll go with, because DTM is now run with quad turbo four cylinders. Yeah, that's the issue. It is. Because... It is with turbo cylinder now, or cylinders turbo engines. They just have started the season. I don't know how this will work. I mean, I'm really curious to see how the September Super GT goes, but there's a lot of like things that they had to compromise. One is that the Super GT cars need to deal with handling with a different tire this time around. Not Yokohama's, not <laughs> Dunlop's. We had to use, was that Hankook's, is that what it's called? Hankook's, yeah. Hankook's. So that's like a way different tire that they'll use. Same with like, with, again, just like I said, the GT 300s, especially the Mar chassis, did not like the Perowis. The G3 cars for uh, the Super GT teams were doing fine. Not the uh, ones that are like mostly like race based on Super GT, which is why I'm a little bit worried, I guess, with the Super GT. 
I mean, I don't care who wins. It's a good thing for our rank, you know, having class one races now. Uh huh. Uh-huh. But I don't, I don't know who's gonna have like the best benefit of it, like you know, with the cards or will it be close because DTM I think it looks pretty cool. LOI. The problem is that they have like some things where they have like you know curse or some like boost stuff or whatever they have in there. While we don't, well we have our own yeah, speed. They, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they have the DRS and a push to pass system, but oh, they that's... announced <laughs> that they, the joint race in Fuji they will remove the DRS and the push to pass and I guess they would do some kind of slight BOP if needed but uh, I don't think they will need because the cars are built both the series are under the same basic rules it's only minor changes like the Multi tires for Super GT and the DRS and uh, <coughs> the push to pass from for DTM, but the basic regulations for the cars is all the same. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know at least. Oh yeah, way more stuff by the way. How about this? The chairman's opinion about a report from Europe that the uh, that Audi is interested in joining GT500. Yeah, I don't know why I'm Ooh. I don't know why I'm dropping so many frames, Chris. And then he also said DTM is always DTF. <clears throat> Alright, let me read this. If you guys are if you guys don't mind. Yeah, um, the, But Audi would it's good. You you could go first, I'll just I'll wait. I'm trying to close as many apps as possible. I don't know if my computer can't handle running both Twitch and YouTube. I don't know. Maybe it's Twitch, YouTube, and uh, if you have the Chrome open, the Google Chrome and the Discord. <clears throat> I'm going to close sometimes the Twitch chat. If, um, sometimes if uh, I run OBS and have the, what is it, the preview window, if I have that selected and it's on, so I can see the, the game recording, that actually does affect frames as well. But I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just... Um, minimize the OBS then, or how do I get? Or isn't there one? If you, preview? yeah, if you right click and it at the very top, it says disable preview. Awesome. Okay, that that has to help. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> oh, by the way, um, TMC. Yes, sir. Uh, you forgot that next year is the um the Olympics, right? Uh, where? Tokyo. Japan. Oh, okay. I'm looking forward and, to that. And uh, okay, so here's what the, uh, the um that the uh, the GTA's uh, th- thinking about. Um, they said that they hadn't planned anything, but one of the uh, that one of the venues that they have, Fuji Speedway, will be a venue for cycling events and will close for more sports starting at the end of May. Currently, there are discussions about what to do with events like Super Tech, Super, Super Tech 24 Hours Race. It could also affect drivers who are currently participating in multiple series like the VEC. So they're trying to like plan around the Olympics right now, as we speak. Guys are actually doing cycling, which I'm gonna watch actually. I don't know why I'm. I mean, I'm not interested in cycling, but I think I'll watch it just because it's in Fuji Speedway. Oh, they're yeah, they're so. cycling at Fuji. <clears throat> yeah. Oh shit, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I know about Restream, Chris. I use Restream to stream on both YouTube and Twitch. I wonder who. Couple of frames, not many though, not as much as it was just now. It like blips now and again. Okay. Oh, hello, uh, Japanese person. Ooh. Hi. Ohio, Ohio Gozaimas. Or Genki Disco. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> that was uh, hello, good morning, how are you? Uh, okay. I'm, I'm most looking forward to the, um, to the opening ceremony of the uh, Olympics because apparently they're going to have what is it like oh, uh, shooting stars or something? They're going to fire metal pellets into the atmosphere of the Earth. And, huh? Uh, like shooting oh, stars. The, the, the ceremony should be must be so so beautiful. The, it, it's got it's Japan. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, it's going to be extraordinary. It's going to be did- amazing. Before I didn't even watch the the ceremony here in here, Rio. It sounds totally safe. 
<laughs> they, bur they burn up in the atmosphere, so they're not going to clonk anyone on the head going like terminal velocity or anything like that. Hey! <laughs> like, like load of Hello, Asahi. Asahi Wasabi, what's up, man? How are you? That'll be awkward if all the uh, competitors are in the main arena and all these metal balls are going to fall down. You just see everyone dropping like flies. It's going to be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> down goes another one. Boom. I mean, I'll definitely, I'll de I was thinking about going to Japan for like the 3GC races, but then I realized, oh crap, 2020, that means that it's going to be full because of the Olympics. That's on my bucket list before I pop my clogs. I need to go to Japan at least once in my life. Yeah. Same. I, I, <laughs> what car is this, Asahi? It's the Nissan 350Z LM Edition. It's a Gran Turismo exclusive car. Yeah, I definitely. Uh, sorry. You said that you want to. You said you want. Oh, sorry, it's okay. My bad. Uh, you go first. No, no, no. You go first. I'll... You did said you. You said you want to go to Okayama, right? That's probably one of the tracks I want to visit the most. Well, apart from Suzuka, but just the reason why is because like I always associate Okayama with like the first track I did road racing on and I racing, and I fell in love with it right when I right when I saw saw <laughs> and drove the circuit on I racing, and, and the cool thing it or. Um, the interesting thing is that I never knew what the Pacific Grand Prix was for, for F1 in 94 and 95 until I realized, oh shit, that's Okayama. Mm-hmm. I missed the old name for it. Was it? Uh, the TIA, though, I guess. Yeah, oh, the yeah, that's what, that's what it used to be called, <clears throat> yeah. On the Taco World Touring Cars, TI Circuit yeah, yeah. Aida. Yeah, okay, yeah. They're, they're both good names, I'm not gonna lie. But, um... That, Okayama has a nice ring to it, though. Yeah. yeah. Okayama okay. has a better flow. Yeah. And, uh, um, I like Okayama and I think uh, Motegi. Because Motegi. you like, because because you said that that's the first race, right? Motegi is like the finale. Like, there's no BOP they need. It's just pure on racing. Yep. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because the Motegi ch uh, races are, are more sprint races, aren't they? Yeah, basically. So it's like, you know, since you don't have to worry about like you know the whole shenanigans with you know weight battles, because it's the same thing with the first race. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> Ender, please. No, no, <laughs> no, Ender, please. <laughs> I will bring. I'll bring my Jeff Gordon diecast into Okayama, and like that would probably work that way. <laughs> Yo okay, mama, uh... Okiyama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all dead. I'm gonna check if Gina is ready. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Go ahead. Am I good now, guys? Any more frames dropping? It's no, still... It's, it's good. It's, it's, it's now good. and again, it stutters. Oh, it stutters a little bit, but it's not like, you know, too bad. Oh, no, no. Not at all. Okay, I'm just but... wondering if my recording is getting affected. Only because, like... It doesn't tell me anything about drop frames. Like it will tell me if my frames are dropping. Like it will tell me like I, lower your I settings think or something. It's purely YouTube at this stage. It's probably just servers and maybe it overflowed or something. It happens to me as well. <clears throat> Even on, um, you know, just watching videos back in general, and it stutters, and then like an hour later, it's absolutely fine. So I think it's literally just a connection to YouTube. Yeah, also, it, it, I, it is what's happening. Oh shit! I hit the wall. You did. It's okay. What am I gonna do after yeah. this race? Um, I after this race, I don't want to do the DTM series because there's one prize card that I can unlock for the third car to use in the series because I have an Astra and I have a Lexus. The FGT series is gonna be the finale because I said so, and then the endurances. There's no short endurances left, so I might start a long endurance, and it won't be the Suzuka race. I promise. Yeah, we still we're still planning on it, right? Yes, sir. I'll talk to you later about that. Ten four. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm really happy that I introduced all, like some people like DMZ and others to CVGT. I think I actually done my work by like, having people be interested. Oh, thanks to whoever just followed me on Twitch. I appreciate it. I can't see my, I can't see my <clears> screen, <throat> but I heard a little ring. I'll, uh, I'll have to uh, record some voice audio like I did for Rick for you as well. New subscriber. <laughs> uh, I've New done follower. I've done ev <clears throat> I've done everything except for some of the endurances and two extreme or, well, not counting this anymore. Two extreme endurance uh, extreme events. 
wasabi. I'm almost done with the game. I've, I already beat the NASCAR race. It was a pain in the ass in B spec, not so much in A spec. And cool thing, I had a real NASCAR driver on my commentary for the B spec race. That was pretty awesome. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 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 I yeah. remember. My good buddy Ryan Vargas was also R Vargas in this game. <laughs> Who's talking? Nice killing that squeaky <laughs> toy. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I was talking to uh, DOS Gamer T, he's the one that does all the DOS games um, videos on my server. <clears throat> and as soon as he heard Squishy, he was like, Is that your bed squeaking? <laughs> I'm like, I said no, I said the last time my bed actually seen any action was when we had that small earthquake at the beginning of last year. I said, so, no. <clears throat> I said so no, I said my, <laughs> my bed doesn't make that kind of noise. <clears throat> no, that is sure. a... Carry on. No, you go first. Uh, no, I'm uh, just to clarify. No, that is my pet zebra finch, uh, Squishy. Um, he does sound like a squeaky toy, but he is incredibly small. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Squeaky is just like making like good old like good memes, just like Squeaky just doing his own thing. To be honest, he has his little routine every single night. He will not sleep unless I stick my finger between the bars of the cage. He comes up to my finger, gives it a peck, it's like he's giving my finger a kiss goodnight and then he tucks up and goes to sleep. Cutest thing in the world. <clears throat> but he is a loud pain in the ass. Especially yeah. when uh, it starts getting light earlier, like at like, 4 o'clock in the morning, and that noise is going on and it wakes me up. And you're just like, whoop. I just cover it with my uh, with my bathrobe at that stage, I'm like, no, I need sleep. Pet zebra fringe is a type of bird sandwich. Yes, I remember the tiny... last time you told that story, we were still counting in stones. <laughs> Pebbles. Boulders. I remember that. Can we just, can we just make a decap of, of your, uh, your bird? Uh, yeah, I, I've, yeah, I've got him on... Uh, he's one of my emotes on my Discord server. Oh, nice. Yes, uh, send uh, Rishi... Rishi, can you upload uh, Squishy into GT Sport, please? He's, he did it for you know some logos that I wanted. Yeah, because I, um, I need I need him just so we could be part like stay with us in the racetrack. Yep. On oh, there, I'll uh, I'll put the Squishy. Uh... You are all my server, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Uh, yeah. Squishy, there he is. There you go. Ten four. Anyways, how's the um, car feeling for you, TMC? 6.8 seconds ahead. It's the um, these cars are overpowered. This car's overpowered, by the way, for this race. I mean, it's it's. I don't know how can I say about this car. This is it's not a, a GZ500 car, by the way. I know it's not even close. Nope, it's one of those uh, fantasy uh, GT1 cars. No wonder why it's too damn quick. <laughs> What's up, your nan poo poo? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting name. <laughs> That was an awesome name. <laughs> By the way, they're still stuttering, yeah. Ah. You're still good, though, it's just a little bit. I definitely think it's just YouTube being YouTube at this stage. Oh, by the way, I forgot that today is uh, FI Day. Oh boy, what... what races are today? Alright, so there's a, GT... there's a Group 4 race in uh, Manufacturers, and I don't really care because it's group four and my, my mercedes is pure shite nations though is interesting because it's basically a group three race at monza oh god and guess what everyone's probably gonna get gtrs that's the fastest car for that race yeah ow oh also i'm doing pretty good poo poo thanks for asking um yeah, i mean it's tough speed dude it's like straightaways Really? I, I thought <laughs> today is Wednesday, not Friday. Because <laughs> you said the fast, you're like FIA day, like. <laughs> well, it's, um, I'm seeing like, oh, everyone's doing stream on FIA now, or unless they've like got like practice. Are we talking about GT Sport? Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh man, I just got really tired all of a sudden. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, 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 I mean, hey, hey. I mean what? <laughs> That, uh, that race I was doing yesterday was a ton of fun. Not so much for Mikhail, but for me, it was a lot of fun. It, I mean, it was fun. It's just that there's so many people deciding, oh, it's, that's drift for our Red Bulls and like turn one. Oh, but today yeah. I, I did a race, and 
I, I think I said this in the previous video that I recorded today. Um, Brazilian dude goes from like sixth to second and like punts the leader off. Like I, I was a pulse leader, but I got a bad I got a bad start. And um, yeah, I had to go to the grass Ferrucci style to take evasive maneuver. I went down to like seventh or eighth. Was working my way up back to the lead by the end of the race, but then unfortunately I hit the wall coming out of the second uh, Dagner corner. So you're uh, a lawnmower now. Yes, sir. Have I done GT6? I did GT6 when I first started the channel, but I scrapped the, the project because it was terrible. I'm going to do GT6 after GT5 is done, however. This so, is <clears throat> so if you want to watch that, subscribe. By that... law, you need to do it in chronological order. Uh, no. <laughs> I did the first game because it's the first game, then I'm doing it from least favorite to favorite. So, oh, least, okay. so you're saying that this is the least favorite? Um, only because the presentation and like the organization of the game is really sloppy. Oh. It's definitely rushed. I feel. It, it's rushed even though this game took six years to come out. Yeah. It, compared to GT4, which t t personally is still the best. Aesthetically pleasing and, and the intro as well still gives me goosebumps. Yes, sir. I've done uh, the I've done the B spec. I did all, I did the B spec first, all the way up to level forty. All endurance is done. Everything is complete. I have an, a whole LP on the B spec stuff separately. It's on my channel. Um, yeah, the intro for GT four and three really good, but GT four it's like, oof. Especially moving over the damn. castle, dude. Oof. Damn. But reason is treason. Oh my god, what? Hello, I'm Mikhail. You know me from the hits like TMT Destroys the Competition. I was also there, I swear. JK, love you, Nick. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Every time when I race, TMT always, like, does well. <laughs> uh, not quite. What do you mean? <laughs> no mechanical or physical damage. Gran Turismo, the real driving simulator. <laughs> I don't know how they can still use that slogan. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, if it's got no mechanical or physical damage, it's not a simulator, it's an arcade <laughs> racer. <laughs> Here's the thing though, then what about Forza where everyone decides to implode? <laughs> In four transit vans, no less, yeah. So yeah, they, don't, they don't deem themselves to be the real driving simulator, it's just a, a driving sim. At least no one's probably the real driving sim right at this point. I could agree it's not Grand Turismo, but it's not Forza. It's not you know. I would anyone say else. the best sim that I've played, which is kind of the most realistic, has got to be the Reza Studio games. Automobilista? Yeah, and now that they've announced Automobilista 2 coming out in in um, December with you know uh, dynamic weather effects and they're using a new engine as well, it's. You know, yeah, that's definitely my pick. But the thing is, my PC, even with the upgrade, still won't run it. So wonderful. This car Ooh. sounds wank. Every car in GT5 sounds wank, except for like a small handful of cars. Um, the thing that, the thing that other Sims better be scared about, in my opinion, is the fact that they're using the Project Off the Project Off Project Cars gra <laughs> um, engine for graphics, and then they're going to use, you know, obviously with a, with automobilistic physics and everything, that that game's going to be like forced yeah. to reckon with. I mean. Come on, I mean, if they could redefine or optimize the R Factor 1 engine to what it was in Automobilista, which is absolutely fantastic, with the Project Cars 2 engine, it is going to be one of the best simulators if they do it correctly. <clears throat> That's the thing. Um, they need to spend a lot of time on it. I wouldn't quite say GT4 cars sound way better. I'd say they sound better, but in GT4, you put a racing muffler in every car, every car sounds like... Every car sounds exactly the same, so I so every car that. sounds like Squidward. Yes. <laughs> I like, wish I could have. I wish I could have that as like a like ringtone. Like doing that. like listen to the <laughs> listen to the all the Supras and listen to the DTM cars. They sound exactly the same. All the race cars sound exactly the same. Every car with a racing muffler sounds exactly the same. Nice. Except for like the G the GT one, even though it sounds fake, it sounds awesome. Seven A Seven B sounds pretty good. That's what I was saying to Rick the, uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was watching his stream. He was doing the rally events on GT Sport, and the cars sound identical to GT cars, the rally cars anyway. It's like really? there's no variation to to 
to, to the engine notes or, or how the engine sounds. Every car sounds pretty much identical. By the way, GG. GG, <laughs> good win. Thank you, sir. By the way, I think I noticed that the livery is kind of similar for some reason. It's similar to the IMSA livery from the 300ZX. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. And I saw that car before, too. Yep, the FedEx car, I oh. think it was. About 10 years ago, I forgot to tell you the story, uh, TMC. Uh, there's a, a, a place um, which is about a mile and a half away from here. It's quite an upmarket area of uh -huh. the, uh, the outskirts of my city. And there was a bloke who used to live in one of these massive houses. And you know what was parked outside? What? An absolute replica down to the decal of the number 36 Castrol Supra. Ooh. Complete with livery. And it was parked in his driveway. And it was absolutely stunning. It, is it just showing on, like, the, like, in the parking? Just, like... He used to drive it around town. But there was a woman that lived in the same area who used to drive a silver with blue stripes Dodge Viper. What's from it you the and have, what? What, was, what was it you she, and having good neighbors? Or like I, good they're not neighbors. I wish I could live in that row because I would be minted. But yeah, I mean, we've seen her driving past where I used to work a couple of times. And it takes up a lane and a half on our roads. And There's no mad, way. Are you <laughs> mad, Joey? No. This? No, because I value my life. I wouldn't drive a muscle car with our weather in the UK, with the rain. It would. I would wrap myself around a tree by looking at the accelerator, let alone pressing it. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Anyways, we won Godzilla for, for doing this championship. We won the Kalsana yes. Skyline from 93, the Group A car. Nice. Godzilla, best kaiju. Yep. Anyways, yeah. guys, that'll do it for this video. Next time on Gran Turismo 5 A Spec, we will be doing the Sakuba 9 hours because I don't want to do the other events just yet. Yeah.